The first speaker that we have today is our own San Joaquin County Registrar of Voters, who will talk about the voting situation here in San Joaquin County in the midst of COVID-19. Melinda Dubroff is our Register for San Joaquin County. She was appointed in 2017 by the San Joaquin County Board of Supervisors. She is uh, all about making it easy and convenient for all eligible voters to register and cast a ballot. Prior to moving to San Joaquin, she worked in San Mateo County Elections Office, participating in every aspect of voter registration and election administration process, from candidate filing to finalizing the statements of the vote, redistricting, uh, and recounts and security reviews and developing a website redesign for San Mateo County. Melinda graduated from the University of California, Berkeley. Melinda's passion for voting process is aligned with the San Joaquin County's commitment to conducting fair, impartial, accurate, secure, and transparent elections and increasing participation and civic literacy in this way. Melinda considers herself an elections evangelist. Without any further ado, let us welcome Melinda Dubrov. Good morning, Melinda. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I think I need to update uh, my intro to talk about uh, less about my previous job four years ago and more about all the wonderful things that we've been doing here in San Joaquin County. So uh, I'm gonna send right. you a new one. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you because can uh, we've, we've been doing a lot of great things, um, which we are going to uh, carry over into uh, November and in you know quite a few new ways given COVID. So I appreciate the opportunity to come here and, and talk to you all about that. Uh, there's also a lot of, of uh, confusion and fear about what the election is going to look like. So I hope to be able to, to answer any questions or, or follow up on any concerns uh, that, that I would uh, be able to address. So uh, first of all, let's talk about what's new uh, this election. Uh, we will not have traditional neighborhood polling places. Uh, the idea is for people to stay at home and vote at home. And every registered voter will be mailed a ballot. But we know not every voter has a good mailing address or gets their mail, even if it gets delivered. Uh, not every voter has a home uh, to receive the mail. So uh, we're making sure that we have in-person voting opportunities we will have 34 voter service centers throughout the county. Uh, and in the, at those locations, people will be able to get their vote by mail ballot. Uh, they can get it, take it home. They can pick it up for someone else uh, or they could just vote right then and there. Uh, the voter service centers will also be available for people to come in and register to vote. If they miss the voter registration deadline in California, you can still vote. It's our version of same day registration. It's called conditional voter registration because they need to come into the office and, uh, or, or the voter service center and make sure they haven't voted someplace else already. Uh, so it's conditioned upon looking them, uh, their record up in the system uh, once they register. Uh, the, the voter service centers will have the accessible ballot marking device we've been using uh, since, since last election. We have a new voting system. Uh, so that replaced our Diebold uh, touch screen. And now we have a, uh, a touch screen device that actually prints out uh, a, a, a ballot uh, based on what the voters' choices are, and, and, and the ballot looks like everybody else's. It's no longer just a, a touch screen. So um, what's similar, uh, you know, we've, we had those uh, ballot marking devices at all the polling places last election. Uh, 
in the last election, we had four voter service centers, uh, one each in Lodi, Stockton, Manteca, and Tracy. This election, we're gonna have 34. And uh, a voter from anywhere in the county to, can go to any one of those 34 locations and uh, get a replacement vote by mail ballot, get a, you know, get, get a ballot uh, and do the same day registration. 70, um, per, 75% of our voters in March, if they cast a ballot, they cast it by mail. So already three quarters of the voters are voting this way. And of all the voters in the county, 80% uh, are already signed up to vote by mail every election. So 80% are already expecting a ballot in the mail. But it's that 20% uh, that, that clearly didn't want to vote by mail in the past. And uh, for whatever reason, you know, they, they prefer to you know, vote in person. And that's a group that we want to uh, really connect with. Uh, we've got um, a lot of information coming out uh, in our sample ballot and voter information pamphlet. We're gonna have a mailing uh, later this month, beginning of September to every single voter uh, to let them know uh, what, what the envelope is going to look like so they don't throw it away. They don't think it's just junk mail. Um, so that sometimes happens. People get a lot of mail, they throw it away. So we want to uh, alert uh, people of the, uh, of the ballot that's coming. It's not just that 20%. Um, oh, so the voter service centers. We are still finalizing those locations. We uh, intend to, our, our goal, our target is to have them finalized at the end of this coming week. Uh, we have to get the information to the printer. We need to post it online for public review. Um, so, so we really are in a deadline on this. Uh, it's, it's been a struggle. Normally, uh, we use um, the you know, regular schools, churches, city halls for polling places, uh, but they are not always easily convertible uh, to to a voter service center because we need more room. We've, the Secretary of State rec recommends that we have 2,400 square feet so we can spread people out. And a lot of the schools and school districts uh, that we were uh, counting on to use their gyms uh, have been a little reluctant. So we've been working with uh, the school superintendents uh, and Dr. Maggie Park, our um, county public health officer uh, to come up with specific protocols and uh, to, to really help um, the schools and any location uh, really feel comfortable with allowing the public to come in and, and out of the facility. Um, the, uh, we're, we're also looking at uh, empty commercial real estate, uh, real, commercial uh, real estate locations. Uh, and if, you know, I'm, I'm reaching out to everyone at this point, you know, if someone, if someone knows uh, of, a, of a place that's, that's empty, uh, we'd be happy to, to rent it out so that we can um, easily serve, uh, or that voters can easily access uh, our services. Um, I have a couple of questions in the, the chat. Let's see, uh, the proper forms of ID required. Uh, we, we don't have um, an ID requirement in California. However, um, if, if a voter registers uh, by mailing in uh, a voter registration card and they don't provide a uh, driver's license or last four of their social uh, and we can't find their driver's license in, in the state records, uh, then they will be asked uh, to, uh, to show ID. However, there are 34 different forms of uh, identification uh, that, that can be used for that purpose. 
um, and not just the driver's license and passport and all that, but your, um, you know, your, your NAACP membership card would, would do it. Um, and, so, and Melinda, so and don't, yeah. just, don't stop to answer questions. We'll have a Q and A after you okay. finish your presentation. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So these voter service centers will uh, be open for four days, election day and the three days prior. So we'll have voting at 34 locations, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, November 3rd. Our office will be open and providing all of these services starting October 5th. So it's actually a 30 day voting period. So people can come into our office uh, and, and get what they need. But the point of the safety of this election is for people to be able to stay at home, stay safe, vote at home. If, if someone doesn't get a ballot, call us. No need to come in. We, we will get it to you. We will mail it to you. If it's too late in the, you know, if, if you call us the day before the election and you're unable to, to get to a voter service center, We'll, we'll, uh, we'll get it to you. We've, we have delivered ballots to people. Uh, we've got a team of people uh, dedicated to, to getting those ballots to people. So it's just, it's just a matter of connecting with us and taking the, um, the initiative to call us if you don't have a ballot or email. There are a lot of new tools out there and uh, voters can register online. Voters can look up their, their voter status online. Do we have your correct mailing address? Uh, and, and you can look at uh, voterstatus.ca.gov. Uh, there's one of my um, coworkers, Maurice Taylor, is uh, on, on this call as well. Uh, he, can, he can put into chat if he's, if he's online. Um, rather than just call in to uh, put in the, um, the links that I'm talking about. Uh, but we have this uh, tool called Where's My Ballot? And this is one of the, the things we're promoting with the public. Um, Where's My Ballot? If you sign up for Where's My Ballot, and it's either online or call us and we'll, we'll sign it up for you, you can get a text email or, or a phone alert uh, when, when your ballot hits the post office, when it's coming to you. Um, <clears throat> and uh, when you send it back to us, where it is in the mail process, uh, when we receive it, you'll, you can get an alert on uh, if it's counted and if not, why not? And it will kind of lead people through to, um, to, to help make sure that if there's any, you know, disqualifying uh, reason on their, their, um, their vote by mail envelope, uh, you know, like they forgot to sign the ballot um, or they, uh, the signature was sloppy and didn't match the real signature, uh, that, that will alert them to, to contact us to fix the problem. We check the signatures of every single ballot uh, and that are, um, every single return vote by mail envelope. So that means that every ballot that comes through the mail, we check that signature before we open the envelope and count that ballot. And so if there is a problem, somebody forgets to sign it, and like I said, the sloppy signature, we, every day, we will send out letters to people whose uh, uh, envelope uh, was disqualified. And uh, in the last election, we uh, ran those letters uh, two or three times a week. But this election, we're going to do it every day. And then at a certain point, um, you know, we'll, we'll start reaching out to people who have given us, you know, phone numbers and email addresses and things like that. Um, so uh, we're very committed to making sure that, that people I mean, it's a different process than before. Uh, a lot of people uh, are familiar with going to the, to the polls and uh, we wanna be sure they know the, uh, 
what it takes to make sure that your vote by mail ballot is counted correctly. Um, so we've got educational material uh, coming in the mail, the, 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 we're calling it special mailing uh, to voters in early September, uh, the sample ballot voter information pamphlet, and there'll be information about uh, the, the voter service centers um, and the whole process in the packets that go out. We, we talk to people about, um, well, people have contacted recently about, you know, their top concerns about uh, the election. And this last week, the Postal Service has been a top concern. Um, so the, we're, we're wanting people to know there are two ways to get your ballot back to us, through the mail or directly to us. So through the mail is free postage. Directly to us can be through uh, a, a ballot drop box. We're gonna have 24 official ballot drop boxes throughout the county. Again, we have some difficulty in, in nailing those down, uh, finalizing those locations. It's been a, a bit of a struggle. We're looking for uh, places that are accessible that the community knows about um, to, to put those drop boxes in. Um, and they, they can drop them off at city halls. Uh, we'll have uh, some drive up locations where people can stay in their car. And uh, like we had in, in November, uh, drive up democracy where people would stay in their car and hand their ballot to, uh, to staff. Um, so we'll have those as well. Um, so there's, there's a lot of information to get out to the public. I mean, there, this is, and a lot of misinformation that we, we, have, to, uh, we have to educate people uh, so that they get their information from, you know, the actual, you know, from trusted sources. Um, people ask about, uh, you know, voter fraud and things like that. There are so many different things, ways that people can break the law. Um, and they're, the, the ones that, that scare me the most are, are related to voter suppression uh, because the, the one voter uh, that's trying to forge someone's signature is not as dangerous as somebody putting out misinformation, um, you know, and, and people not having the right information on, on how to uh, cast a ballot. So we wanna be a trusted source of information on our website, in, in meetings like these. Um, and, uh, you know, we've got, we've got some funding, which is nice. Um, the Secretary of State or the state um, has, uh, we've got, so I, I, I increased our budget uh, for, for voter outreach uh, for this election, and then the state gave us uh, probably 20 times that amount for voter outreach given the COVID election. So we're going to be doing um, uh, a lot more ads uh, on, on TV, digital, um, uh, radio, uh, more of these if possible, although these are free. Uh, which I appreciate. Uh, we've got one of the things to help people understand vote by mail is uh, putting together some videos about the life of a, a vote by mail ballot so they can see, you know, where, what happens to it when we mail it, when it comes back, and to give people the confidence about how this, that part of the, uh, the process works. Um, so, uh, let's see, other, other uh, voter outreach activities, uh, definitely uh, just wanting to talk to as many people as possible. Uh, we've had a lot of success with our workshops uh, in the last couple of years, uh, but we're not having in-person workshops anymore. So um, I'm hoping that as a result of 
of meetings like these, I can talk to even more uh, groups because I have a suspicion that, that many of the members in this meeting belong to other groups and uh, would, would, we would be happy to speak to them as well. Okay. So that's, that's the overall. I'd love to take more questions. Okay, well, thank you, Melinda, for the information. And at this point, we will take uh, questions for about 10 minutes. And we also will, any questions that we don't get to answer at this point in time, we will take out of the chat box, send to uh, Melinda so that your questions can get directly answered and, and a response back to you. So thank you again. Uh, now we will have our team that's handling the chat box for the questions. I believe that's Didi and Brandon. Yes, thank, thanks, President Bivens. Um, and thank you, Ms. Dove, for uh, being a part of our community and all that you do. We have a few questions here for you today. Um, the first question we have, the president recently indicated that he would oppose funding to the USPS for election aid, which could potentially affect the vote by mail process. Do we anticipate uh, any impacts to San Joaquin County because of this opposition? Very good question. A lot of people are very concerned about this. We are too. Uh, so we don't anticipate any issues based on our conversations with our local postal representatives and what we've been assured uh, by the, the postal service here uh, that we deal with in, in California, in Sacramento, in Stockton. Uh, but, but even if, if we don't anticipate actual uh, issues with it, and I'll let Maurice uh, speak to that, I anticipate that it's gonna scare people. And uh, so, so it's important that we get out in front of the information and uh, you know, if people don't wanna use the postal service to return their ballots, uh, they, can, they can get it directly to us uh, with those drop boxes. So um, I'm, I'm pretty, I, I would like Maurice to, to talk about this. Uh, I'm here. And uh, we, we've had conversations uh, with, with the Secretary of State, uh, our postal representatives, the postmasters, uh, but, but really uh, I'm, I'm just as concerned about people's fears and confidence in the system. So Maurice, if you could, if yeah. you could chime in. Yeah, um, well, uh, my name is Maurice Taylor. I work in the vote by mail department for Melinda. Um, I'm also a former postal employee um, in San Joaquin County. Um, I am in constant contact with our postal representatives. Um, I meet with them by phone or Zoom meeting every Friday um, to discuss, you know, the current things that are going on, um, what's coming down the pipeline. Um, I know everybody's a little worried about some of the news that's coming out, um, but like um, Melinda said, we've been guarantee that everything on our end is going to be dress right dress meaning you know we shouldn't we don't anticipate having any problems um the vote by mail system is very secure uh when we as a county um, pick up our vote by mail ballots they're not actually dropped off by say a, a, a postal carrier so you don't one of the one of the things about the post office that people were worried about was the amount of slow mail that's been happening. And so we circumvent that by directly picking up our mail from our post office. So, you know, like we said, we don't really anticipate any problems, but then again, you know, things can change, but we do a good job of keeping track and keeping up with our local uh, post offices. Like I said, I'm a former postal employee. Um, even this week, I've talked to the postmaster. I've talked to just about every manager or supervisor in our in the Stockton area to kind of get a gauge on what's going on and, and you know how they think that's going to affect us. And so far, you know, we're we're tracking to to be do to be pretty good. And the ballots will be mailed on October fifth. So if people don't get the ballot by you know, the end of, of that week, uh, mid next week, we're gonna, we're gonna start sending out replacements. We're not gonna waste any time. 
Right. If, if somebody says they didn't get a ballot, we'll, we'll send out a new one. Now this of course scares people. Oh, you're sending out extra ballots. But we're only gonna count one ballot. It's one signature, one person, one vote. One signature on that envelope, one envelope, that's your ballot. So if somebody's concerned they didn't get the ballot, uh, I'm not worried about, I, I wanna get it to them. Uh, we're only going to count one ballot. So, so you know, the, the idea of being concerned about the, the slow walking of the ballots to people, if they know it's coming that first week of October and they don't have it, we'll send them another one or we'll get it to them. Um, and getting it back to us, just like Marie said, uh, we're not counting on a letter carrier to, to bring in those envelopes one by one. He's going down there and picking up the, you know, cages of these things. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bivens and Melinda. Um, so the next question is, being that there is an increase of funds for outreach, um, and there's a high number of African Americans and Latinos that um, are not registered to vote, uh, do you look to see what households have not voted in the past and send mailings to those households um, for outreach or give any special attention to those households? Good question. So um, I'm not in a position to uh, target any particular, uh, you know, demographic. I have to, you know, pretty much send out mailings to, to you know, everyone. It's going to be a countywide mailing. However, our advertising, our outreach events, um, our, uh, yeah, like billboards in certain neighborhoods, things like that, connecting with people, that can be more, more targeted. Having um, enough vo voter service centers in areas uh, where people need them. I mean, we're not going to have, you know, two voter service centers out in Linden. Um, so uh, we're going to have our services where, where they're needed. So um, that's the way we're going to help support uh, areas that are typically, you know, what do they call it? Low probability voters. Uh, not only just low probability voters, but people who don't even know they're eligible to vote, you know, getting, getting that information out there too. So that's, that's, that's our intention. Uh, okay. to, to, Next question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, with the, um, with the next question we have, um, you know, for, for citizens within the community that want to volunteer, do you have enough trained volunteers uh, to work at the service centers? Right now we're in the process of hiring. On Monday, we're going to have a job posting on the county human resources website. Uh, sjgov.org is the county website. So go to human resources. We have three, uh, temporary seasonal positions uh, that are available, elections technician, elections technician trainee, and elections technician assistant. The elections technician assistant is entry level, no uh, experience required, and we are looking to hire as many folks as we can, um, not only uh, to, to help us in our office, but to, like you said, to serve at those voter service centers. Um, the, the voter service centers, because of the, the protocols that we'll have in place to protect people from, from COVID, we have to have quite a few staff people there. We've got to have someone sanitizing, uh, wiping down all the, the voting booths every time somebody uses it, uh, you know, offering a mask to someone, monitoring the occupancy of the room. So uh, we do need people. And uh, some of the people need to be using a computer uh, to look folks up in the voter file. They're gonna be sitting there connected to the uh, voter registration database issuing ballots. So, you know, we need a variety of people uh, to, to help us out. We have uh, sent a mailing to all of our existing poll workers um, to see if any of them want to volunteer or volunteer. Everybody gets a stipend or is a county employee through that uh, job application process I just mentioned. Uh, but, but we recognize that our existing pool of poll workers uh, may not be clamoring to uh, work 
work in the public arena uh, due to you know age or concerns about um, about COVID. So um, please spread the word about this this hiring. The job posting goes out on Monday, and uh, it's open for uh, either one week or two weeks. I don't I don't remember what it is. So make it one week. Get in there. <laughs> Okay, so this will be our last question of this segment, and then after Reverend Rivers, we will have a space for uh, questions at the uh, end. So, Deidre, you're up with the next question. Okay, thank you again, Mr. Bivens. Is there a social media flyer that we can share on our individual and on our organization social media pages? Oh, wow, that's, that's great. Um, so we, we're on Twitter and you're welcome to use any of the information uh, that we have uh, on Twitter and share. It sounds like what might be helpful for us is to have some uh, artwork or something like that, like a toolkit uh, for you all to, for anyone to share trusted source of information, uh, accurate information. Uh, yes. Great idea. <laughs> we'll, we'll have on our website, we'll get something up there that has some graphics that you can just download and use um, that, that uh, are about the deadlines and things like that. Uh, wow. I have a job for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can be stealing our people. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> However, we will contract with you. <laughs> Okay, well, I want to thank you, Melinda, for your presentation and the answering of the questions that you've answered thus far. Again, if we don't get all of the questions answered for Melinda, we will be sending them directly to her out of our chat box so that she can get directly back to you.